and after Jesus spent 40 days in the desert after the arrest of John the baptizer he came and he proclaimed repent and believe in the gospel last Wednesday we begin the 40 days of preparation for Easter and uh, each one of us when we approach the celebrant or those who minister with him as they impose ashes on us they say to us the same words repent and believe in the good news my dear people the covenant that God made in, with Noah in today's reading is a covenant that reflects our baptism as the water of the flood destroy evil from the face of the earth so the waters of baptism destroy evil from our souls and as Saint Peter said to us very well today the waters of the flood reflect the waters of baptism in which we die with Christ in the water of baptism to rise with him to a new life. These 40 days of, e of Lent are very special in the life of the church and that's why it is very important that we take them very seriously because many times we celebrate Lent after Lent and we don't know why we are celebrating these 40 days. These 40 days are based on three important factors that we intend our prayer, that we fast, and we also open our, our hearts to the needs of those around us. And we are going to explain those three because it's very important. During this season, we, what we say, intends our prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is the lifting of the heart and mind as we enter into dialogue with God. And prayer is not that we say at memoriam, that sometimes we recite them and sometimes we don't know what we are reciting. It's really a time when we reflect on the Holy Scriptures and that's why it is very pious and also it is great occasion the, or it is very a good ritual that the church is still in us that during the Lenten season we go to daily Mass not only to receive communion but in a very special way to walk through this Lenten season in the same direction the church tried to teach us by the Word of God and the Word of God is an examination for each one of us to meditate on to see where we are through that reading in our lives and that reading always remind us for one thing and that is to repent of those things that are not pleasing to God to turn away from sin as we prepare to celebrate at the vigil of Easter or Easter Sunday morning our baptismal promises where our parents or we at the time of confirmation or if we were adults have re renounced Satan and all his works and, profit and profess to believe in God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And that is very important dear people that prayer through scriptures as we read the scripture and pray over them prepare us for that renewal. Prayer leads us to fasting. Now many people think that fasting means I don't drink beer during the season, I don't drink chocolate, I don't take any sweets. It is all right, those things are very important. In fact, the church recommends them because by saying no to this flesh, we are mastering ourselves to say no to evil. Fasting in itself has no meaning. If you fast so that you look slimy, at the time of Easter so that your dress looks nice on you or whatever you are going to put on is not the fasting that the church wants. It's not the fasting that we do as we read on, on Wednesday, on Ash Wednesday, a fasting that although we do it for ritual, then we end that fasting in fighting and going after each other. 
Fasting means that I am going to take away from me what I like most so that I can even with that fasting I can not only glorify God and challenge myself as I put the armor the, the armor against evil so that I can I can overcome evil when evil comes my way but also fasting reminds me of those important uh, actions of Lent and that is that what I save from the little food or from little thing that I did not buy what I will help those who are less fortunate remember that fasting is very important in fact the Lord said if you don't fast and pray you cannot be saved many people say then what is fasting fasting is a spiritual fasting I, fa I fast from my eyes today if you look at the media the media is trying to overcome our Christian values whether you like it or not people say well there is nothing wrong in this and there is nothing wrong in that my dear people there is if the action or in the movie or anything that you are watching goes against the principle of the gospel goes against the Christian values the Christian values are based on the gospel today we are hearing about marriages for example as you know we are in the year of marriage as you know our Holy Father with the help of God he will be here in September in Philadelphia in our neighborhood to celebrate the great gift of God to humanity that covenant of love that covenant that is made not only by the couple but also is registered and witnessed by God that's why we insist that marriage will take place in a building of a church and also the represent of the of the church priest or deacon who are ordained they will witness the they will witness the marriages marriage is as God created is between one man and one woman and that covenant of love is so dear to God that even scripture take it as a motto take it as an example how God as Hosea speak to us enter into a relationship with the people as a man fell in love with a woman so God fell in love with us and that's why even in our misery of sin God so loved us that he gave us his son to reconcile us from evil to unite us again in that mystical marriage in that marriage in that covenant between us and God and believe me dear people whatever they say the media today that we have to honor and that we don't have to be in inclusive and we, this is not the proper way and the church needs to open her eyes and the church needs to change her ways what God has created man cannot separate it what God has united he brought men and women in creation complementary to each other to love each other so that they will continue with him the creator the continuation of procreation and no one can change that you can tell me whatever you want you can discuss with me how much you want you can tell me another pope will come and change it because no pope no bishop no priest and no church can change what God has given us that we call it divine institution how many times we say what is fasting fasting is to fast your mouth your, your lips to fast your your tongue how many times in our daily lives we encounter people who comes and give us gossip about this one and that one and we even if we don't say nothing we are cooperating in what that evil that that person or those people are saying or doing what is fasting Fasting is when I fast my eyes from films, from internet, that really are shedding me or taking away the value of the Christian, of the Christian call, which is the message of the gospel. Repent and believe in the gospel, Jesus said. He didn't say repent and stop there. We cannot repent, but we repent and then there is the action, and that is to believe in the gospel. I confess that I will confess all my sins 
and to avoid all the occasion that lead me to sin, we say in the act of contrition. So it's not just confessing my sin, confessing my sins with the purpose and the amendment that I would not try to do them again. Say, Father, I have a habit of doing this and do it again and again. And that is what Lent is all about. To remind me of the popular sin, which I said in an in a, in a, in a, in a example, of that sin that really is destroying me from proceeding myself to enter into a whole relationship with the Lord Jesus. That's what fasting is all about. If I know that that internet, if I know that that movie, if I know that that uh, uh, book that I am reading is taken away from me what the gospel promotes and by which that gospel is leading me for salvation, I must avoid it. Don't tell me I am an adult. Don't tell me it's not going to do nothing to me. Believe me, dear people, everyone have good days and bad days. And the devil knows because he is a very cunning man, cunning, cunning uh, um, spirit. And we know that when you are down, then is the time to come and really try to relax you and remind you of what you read, what you see, or what movies you have watched. And then is the time of the fall. Remember that Satan is not is not dumb. Satan knows when he comes and that that. The enemy comes to us when we less expect him. And that's why we have to be always alarmed, always ready. Semper armatus. That means always ready and put the armor on us. That is what fasting is all about. And I am doing this so that when I say no to this book, no to that program, no to this movie, no to the internet, I will know to say no when Satan comes to steal the grace of God from my heart to sin. Arms given. We really understand here that the Christian calling is based on this very much important um, goal of, of Lent. At the end of my journey, the Lord is not going to tell me how many mess, messes I said. He's not going to tell me how many communions I received. I was hungry. I was thirsty. I was ill. I was in prison. I was homeless. What did you do for me? And I don't want to give him no excuses because Jesus is knocking at my door. Those who are less fortunate are among us. And they are among us because God put them there for a purpose, to challenge me to reach out to them, because in them I see the Lord himself. Whatever you did to the least of my brothers and sisters, you have done it for me. This is what the Air people Lent is all about. This is why this 40 days of Lent, I call them 40 days of retreat, 40 days of preparation. Forty days that remind me of the forty days of the Jewish people who are traveling for forty years in the desert till they arrive to the Holy Land. And so do we. We are preparing to go to the, our Holy Land. We are preparing to go to our haven. We are preparing to go to our destination. And what is the church saying to us? Repent. And repent is not for those people. It's not, for, it's not for those people who are sinners. It's for each one of us. We need to let go. We need to renew ourselves. How can you renew the baptismal promises at Easter when sin has a clutch on you? When you are still attached to evil? When you are not free to give yourself totally and completely to God? This is what Lent is all about, dear people. And this is what we need to prepare. Because the celebration of Easter is, a great, is the greatest feast of the church. And that's why at the vigil of Easter, the church prepared those catacombs for those who are preparing during this, this few months to enter into full communion with the church to the waters of baptism. Baptism is for us uh, the sign of our everlasting life. 
Baptism is the entrance in the community of the church. Baptism is faith. And what is faith? Witness. And what is witness in Greek? To die for the what you believe. To die for what you believe. So, if I know that this um, book or this movie or these people or these uh, occasions is taking me away from, from dying to sin, then that book needs to be taken away from me. That movie is not even part of my of my of my uh, of my thing that I want to do. My dear people, Lent is a very special journey. Even the church were the purple to remind us of penance. Remind us that this is the time of salvation. This is a proper time when the Lord will listen to us with intensity. Why? Because we kneel in front of Him and ask Him forgiveness. We ask Him to have mercy on us. We ask Him to help us in our fragility to rise again and walk with Him again. The devotion of the Stations of the Cross is very recommended. Very recommended during the season. You can say it every day. You can say it on Friday. And really unite yourself in that journey. With your, with your personal journey with the Lord. Because the station of the cross, we are people, is the journey of each one of us. That by being betrayed, by carrying the cross, by even falling, by even being exposed, by being crucified and even put away, and sometimes ignored by people, we are going to walk the way, the journey of Calvary to lead us to the open tomb, to the resurrection. This is what Lent is all about. If we really want to observe Lent, we need to do three things. We need to intense our prayer. We need to enter, you know, in that fashion of fasting. And we need to also help those who are less fortunate with us. May the season of Lent really renew us to be ready to renew with the whole church our baptism and promises to deny sin and to believe in God. God bless you.